Arun Ashokan. Okay, so I'm happy to introduce Arun Ashokan. Uh, he has a PhD from uh, Hyderabad University in uh, regional studies, uh, and now is here uh, doing a postdoc uh, with our group uh, on uh, our project, and uh, he will uh, talk about the politics of measurement in Travancore. So, Arun. First of all, I would like to thank to Professor Roy and uh, Babu for giving me this chance to present this paper. Uh, this paper is an attempt to understand the relation between uh, power of the prints and measuring practice in Van Art. By reading the Kain Ganesh Theater pieces on agrarian relation and political authority in medieval Travancore. Uh, this paper trying to raise uh, three questions rather than uh, certain kind of uh, categorical arguments because. Uh, Why was the tax based on the based on estimate rather than measurement in medieval Travancore? Is there any interconnection between estimate of extent and the ontology of measure? If there is such a connection, what is the idea and ideal? behind the ontology of measuring practice of an art? These are the three questions trying to uh, raise, not address, for a collecti collective thinking. In this paper, I attempt to study the interrelation between mobilization of power of the king in Van art and measuring practice by inquiring about the link between measure of land and crop and social life in medieval time. For doing this, I read Ken Ganesh's PhD thesis on agrarian relation and political authority in medieval Travancore, which directly engaged with medieval land record and archival sources of an art, such as Madilagam record and Travancore arch archaeological series. By this reading, I would like to explicate the economic and political authority over land and its produce in this country, produced by a, by a hierarchical social relation between subject, land, and produce, and maintained in part by traditional measuring practices. This hierarchical social relation was based on the birth of the pupil in Jati Vyavastha, the caste system of the country. The ideology of Vernard state was Brahmanism, which hierarchically structured the right and duties of pupil hierarchically by birth. For example, the distance between different castes were fixed hierarchically. For instance, the distance between Brahmin and artisan caste were 24 feet. Between Brahmin and Iravar, tenant caste were 48 feet. Between Brahmin and Pulaya were 64 feet. In Temple, the distance between Brahmin and Nair, that means Shudra, was 6 feet. Between Brahmin and tenant, 24 feet between Brahmin and slave caste, 64 feet. The Iravar artisan caste, slave caste were untouchable to Brahmin. This distance varied regionally. They were, act they, they were actually practiced even though measure, measuring was impossible in certain context. In temples, this distance were marked specially. 
in most other contests however these distances were estimated rather than measured if any one of the lower caste pollute a member of the upper caste by violating this cultural law he may be subjected punished by the state not that for a brahmin the mere seeing of bonded caste such as pulaya was itself polluting therefore they were forced to remain outside the sight of brahmins this is evident that distance between members of different caste were estimated most probably by guess work rather than by actual measurement it is likely as we will see below that estimating the sowing capacity of land for the collection of revenue by the state was also speculative rather than based on physically measuring area of the land by stick or rope in this context three questions emerge why was tax based on estimates rather than measurement is there an interconnection between estimates of extent and the ontology of measure if there is such a connection what is the idea and ideal behind this ontology of measuring practice of anard state estimates and measures early medieval bernard was a federation of regions between koilon and nagarkoil controlled by different conflicting overlords such as brahmins and royal families who loosely accept the authority of an elder prince through rituals and network of temples managed by brahmins in the words of ganesh a network of temple ensured the subservience of the peasantry through the invocation of divine authority land control brought into this create a class of lord landlords mainly temples and brahmins and intermediaries who presumably link themselves with the varna ruler as the territorial chief this region practiced distinct unit of measures for calculating tax rent levy toll and lease over land produce and people and transportation of goods if we consider the northern and southern part of varnad we can see some of these differences para for example was used to calculate volume of grain in northern varnad and kalam in southern varnad these regional differences also visible in the use of small unit of para such as idangali and nadi and division of kalam such as tuni and kurni ganesh rot there was no standardized measure for calculating the yield several type of measurement was were in use mainly kalam marakalam and para this measurement also varied from place to place for example measuring of padi by the padmanabha temple was based on standardized perumal para which was different from the para used in each locality in the northern part land was classified based on the nature of crop cultivated in each strip of the land the land of northern region angambas field of food crop garden of cashew crop cuci forest and swamps the ecology of this part was not fit for large scale production of single crop such as paddy with irrigation in the southern part land classifies based on irrigation channels this part mainly cultivate food crop especially paddy tamil land qualities categories were used to classify the land of this part 
Ganesh wrote, land growing food crop were measured by their sowing capacity and the Tamil form of land measure was mainly used in southern part. The strip cultivated was located in the middle of adjoining fields or field sites on all sides. In the case of garden land, only the boundaries of the land and at times the trees growing in it were given. This means that the actual extent of land held by the cultivator was immaterial. Only the amount of food crop or plant grown was taken into account. The total it was presumably calculated at five to six times to the sowing capacity depending on the estimated fertility of the land and the rent was calculated on the base of the total yield. By examining the Olungu, Oluku and Vilangipuri documents of land, Ganesh further remarked that even in the period of King Marthandavarma, rent was calculated based on sowing capacity and earlier measurement marked in the re rent receipt kept by cultivators and by the overload. All this meant that for the cultivator as for the landlord, there was no method of calculating the extent of the land or its total yield set to a standard measure. The only estimate prevailed were those traditionally accepted in the locality. Hierarchy of power and measure. The character of land holding and land tenure in Vanard country and the mode of calculating share of the land produce from cultivators by overload, signifying the authority of the prince through a hierarchy of power. The measurement possession of land by upper caste landlords and overlords was granted by birthright. They only paid tax to the king or overlord. Moreover, they could lease, mortgage or sell land or cultivate it themselves by their tenants. Another set of land relation was land tenancy by paying rent or lease to an overlord and landlord. This imply mainly to intermediary caste in the caste hierarchy. The user or cultivator of this land not only paid rent or lease to the landlord but also paid tax to the overlord. Apart from this, there was another form of land holding that was the land rewarded to the people for their service to the state. From this land too, the over landholder paid tax to the overload. From all these land possessions, landlord and overlords collect their share through traditional estimate of the produce. The various kind of accountant of the overload maintain the account of the revenue and after the harvest collected the tax. The lion's share of the total yield was appropriated by overload and landlord in this way. Because of the natural calamities and other productive inflections, tenant could not often a uh, tenant could often not pay the rent. On certain occasion, the tenant received rent or tax discount from the overload. Overload used milita to collect the unpaid rent and tax from the landlords and tenants. This often lead to the conflict between temple and royal families. In the 17th and 18th century, in the time of Prince Ramavarma, this conflict reached its peak. 
Moreover, the growth of intermediaries such as Etivital Pilamar as independent landlords precipitated the crisis of the state. They challenged and tried to overturn the authority of Vernad Raja. After the death of Ram Varma, power came to the hand of Martanda Varma. He, he triumphed over the challenge of the big landlord and expropriated their property. Then he began to transform state structure based on customary right into a new absolute structure where the king exercised his authority directly. Monopolization over cash crops such as black pepper, accumulation of amenitations and wealth by its trade with European companies, and survey and settlement of land for unification of tax and rent from food crop production were the three process Martha and Orma implemented at the time to centralize state under his authority. For this purpose, he formed a new standing army and an administrative force. His royal order for land survey by Kandrith, writing by seeing, namely survey of land by direct observation was a new administrative activity. The earlier survey method was catered writing by hearing, which most probably a survey of the land by collecting information from landholders' reports without directly visiting the land. Perhaps this method of survey was a way to prevent the pollution from slave caste who associated with the land. Interestingly, another title of Adhigari, who was the officer in charge of basic administrative action in the administrative structure of Vernard state, was Kelvi Karan, namely the man who hears. The royal order of the king to survey the land by Kandrith perhaps mark a change from the survey based on indirect reports to an ocular auditory survey. The new survey of the land not only documented the land location, extent of sowing capacity, boundary, ownership, nature of land holding, and overload share of produce, but also helped to collect the revenue of the state systematically and wield authority of the Raja over the land by documenting its location and extent. Here the measurement of produce uh, by either column or by para was decisive for calculating the rent and tax, even though the sowing capacity of the land was determined by estimate. Therefore, the measurement implemented by the land survey for fixing the revenue of the state was not only a way of calculating agrarian surplus, but also a technology of power employed by the state to control its subjects. Indeed, the writing, indeed, the written revenue record did not only help to determine st strict payment for tenant caste, but also indirectly forced them to work intensively to meet these demands. This control appeared indirect pressure on bonded laborers whose exploitation was necessary to produce a high yield that could cover the share of the overload and landlord. In this way, the practice of measurement served as a power technology for the ruler. The state of measuring practice make Vernard state as a state of measure. Thank you.
Thank you very much for this talk. Um, for me, it immediately raises a question, which is who carried out direct measurement? Because direct measurement supposed that the person measuring came in contact with people um, who are doing the work. There is this um, who can come into contact with whom in relation to the caste system. Mm. So who conducted direct measurement? Uh, this uh, usually Kanakapile, uh, the accountant, uh, doing that measurement. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, there are other posts regarding um, uh, this you know, measuring officials. But it is not uh, mentioned in his thesis, so I am um, not much aware about the specific categories of the post which were existed in the medieval period. Okay, I, I have many questions. I don't know which to choose. Um, the okay is totally politically incorrect question, but of course, uh, you, your the part of your text that talks about the different uh, feet, you know, the distance in between the different castes in the temple. Uh, I was wondering how standard this was. I mean, was it the same values all over the place, or was it in a certain temple, or was it regional? Uh, values. I think it could be, I mean, w if I don't know how to take, I, I think we need to think, you know, about what this means of how we study measurements in relation to power relations. And so all the elements we can have of local diversity can maybe help us mm -hmm. grasp it as more. Uh, yeah, this uh, uh, distance is regionally varied. That is no doubt at all. Uh, the distance is, here is a technology to distancing and weighting bodies between caste hierarchically, rather than uh, this a kind of a you know, uh, uh, strict kind of measure which uh, expressing. Okay, so but maybe because this um, uh, comes to a, a larger question that's in your paper about, you know, is it exact measures or is it uh, assessment? And yeah. of course, there's this whole uh, question of uh, what were the actor's perception of accuracy that, um, that was in it. So I, I think it's interesting to just... Uh, know what in the documents is stated actually. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say it. Yeah. So this <coughs> there is a variation. You know, in Kerala as well as in Tamil Nadu also, in uh, where they raised dry grains. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not actually measure the land according to, say, Valley and such things. Yeah. Uh, they estimated the land, the area of the land, by the sowing capacity, that is, by the seed capacity. Mm. How much seed a particular land mm. uh, takes mm. for growing, mm. for sufficient uh, quantity of seed. Yeah. So that seed is, of course, by either Edangali or Para or something. Yeah. So that uh, that gives the idea of the actual extent of the land mm. which can cultivate a particular quantity of seed. Mm. And they know from that land so much produce will grow. Mm. So from the traditional uh, estimate, they can understand if, if you put one para of uh, mm. paddy, you can get uh, so 100 para or something like that. There is a, a traditional understanding. Mm. So from that they can calculate. Yeah. I think here this uh, there is no question of this distance of, uh, of the estimator mm. because estimator is himself is a non brahmin mm. and he bra he he may and uh, that, that is uh, only brahmins usually 
practiced this uh, distance keeping for uh, to avoid pollution mm. i think other castes did the other castes also uh, use the practice yeah thoroughly mm, because no uh, <clears throat> from irava that means most of the person and todi tapus community no from them this pulaya around 34 feet they keeping so Thank you. Um, I guess like some of us, I'm just more curious about um, details actually of the survey. So did they, this the survey, does the survey still exist? Do we have the survey that was done? Kandrit, uh, the uh, direct mm. observation and measuring the produce, that yeah. is the thing. happened in the 18th century and we still have that uh, now it converted completely to modern technology of uh, this no uh, i mean did it what was the output was it a text was it a map was it a cadastral map hmm. pardon hmm. yeah yeah Deca uh, the, the, this no uh, old there are two kind of documents as they produced actually one is ulk uh, uh, another uh, <laughs> a particular register of land uh, another one is vilangi uh, per i think vilangi per these are the two mm. documents page 3 sorry sorry i must have missed it Ah yeah 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 okay and did they have maps uh they are only uh, calculated the productive capacity of land the sowing capacity of land yeah. and it's they just uh, mark the uh, the directions of the land that mm. is you no know, the reference point. reference point the location of the land okay but not not, not measured by rope or the of this no stick okay so how can it be a survey if does it if it doesn't have a map <laughs> you see what i mean um how do you visualize i mean how can i put it even if there are reference points it still seems to imply some kind of division of space Mm, like a so cadastre. Estimate measurement and so on, and this is this simpler system mm. that is used to collect. I think it's something similar to structure. You know, when you have different kinds of things, so you can have different kinds of boundaries of the boundaries of the quantity of grain coming in. So that is one of the different points. Uh, okay, so it's another way of thinking space. <laughs> yeah. that that <laughs> thank you that's i get what i was not cartesian kind of <laughs> okay thank you Mm-hmm. So 
Exemplo, eu acredito que as consequências vão ficar graves, vai ser uma situação de alteração. A menor ia poder ajudar, então. A não ser é. assim, porque eles estão acostumados que eles prevem a causa da inveja que eles estão provocando nos filhos, e que são provas que alguém pode ter dois, mais uma pessoa que pode estar com dois, 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 dois. Yeah, yeah, sim. Há essa conta, então, merece isso. Okay. Então, vou ficar, ao fim, quando vou ficar, agora a pessoa está lhe a ficar no trabalho. Thank you. Fascinating. Thank you. <laughs> Point. After all, this is not very different from the French uh, fiscal system until the revolution. Uh, the wealth of every province was estimated, and then the tax farmer had to pay it according to that. And then he had to press out of his people whatever he could get uh, according to similar estimates. So, if the colonial uh, administrators in, uh, uh, didn't understand it, uh, then they did, uh, just didn't uh, look over the channel. <laughs> Back to this is, uh, I, will, I, I understand that there's a local term for accountant or maybe several terms, and uh, I'm struck at it because, you know, the spontaneously, what I think is an accountant is somebody who's going to do computation, so it's not somebody who's going to do land surveys or who's going to know necessarily a list of yields, but count, do accounting or, you know, counting the tax. So I, I think it could be interesting to yeah, specify exactly what's the term and what is you know, what were the different actions that an accountant was doing. So maybe this is well known, I just it's my theory. know that in the village revenue administration, a typical hierarchy, uh, this is from the 18th century, is that uh, Toti, Thalayari, these are names for posts given in the village revenue administration. At least one archival record which I studied, which mentions that uh, the person who actually took the pole and measured the land is the Thalayari. And then he physically measures the land and then pronounces a number to the accountant. And then it is the accountant who makes that number legitimate. And the moment it enters into the register, or the way he pronounces it, authenticates the physical measurement of the land. So there is that. But usually the Talayari does not have access to the elementary school where the accountant can go. But there is that uh, dissonance there. So there is an assigned function, at least since about the second half of the 18th century, we know that there has been a tradition. Most of South India, I would say, at least. Uh, there are uh, different type of accountants was existed in medieval Travancore actually. Uh, basically, uh, uh, there is a king's accountant. Uh, his name is Pandara Kanaku, uh, who realized the royal dues with the help of chief of the desam. Desam means the basic unit of. Uh, territory and the accountants, other accountants. That the, the other accountants, Karavukara uh, Pillai, or Chandrakaran is the another kind of uh, accountant. Who, uh, Karavu perhaps etymologically from Karam, isn't it? No, Karavu uh, Kara is again uh, uh, royal category of that Pandara. Pandara, okay, okay. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Karavu is the trustee, no? Yeah, okay. Thank you. The chand the another is that the Chandrakara. Ch Chandram. Chandram means he become the supervisor of expenditure of the royal household. These are the uh, yeah, yeah. These are the uh, accountants which existed. So the treasury, the palace, uh, treasury. Palace and this Desam, Desam the Karugara uh, Pillai. And, uh, Desam is the unit of uh, the smaller unit of the uh, uh, kind of a district. Not 
Я Канна. In Tamil, Kanaku also happened here. Kanaku. <laughs> Which also means cunning. I mean, in the popular. <laughs> so nothing straightforward about computation. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Arun. Yeah.